It's been five years since I've done a video showcasing all the phones I own. Given this is the last video of 2023 and I've been busy spending time with family over Christmas, I think this is a good opportunity to take it easy and do something I haven't in years. While I do sell quite a few phones through my online store, I've still accumulated quite the hoard. But as you'll see, there is some reason to all this madness. Though I plan on thinning this out quite a bit. So this is the device hoard of 2024. A good portion of these devices will fit in just one drawer of my tool chest. Most of these are here for reference or comparisons in videos, while others are just here for keepsake like my first gen Apple Watch. Starting at the front of this drawer is a small stack of old iPods. Though I never liked the Nanos, this fifth generation was repaired with great difficulty after its battery expanded, the battery also smashing the screen in the process. This is something I could easily part with. The Mini is a one-off iPod model that is quite usable, even today. I also have this third generation which only charges with Firewire, making it impractical to use. However, it works fine and is still equipped with its original thick 40GB hard drive. One device I should part with is this iPod Touch 4. It's an 8GB unit running iOS 6. But I must say, I don't think I've ever seen an iPod with such few scratches. The last iPod in this drawer is a 6th generation on iOS 8.4. I do also have a modified 5th generation classic that forms part of my daily carry. Switching things up a bit, we have some Samsung phones, including the infamous Galaxy Note 7. The first of these devices is a red Galaxy S3 with a battery that's now decided to die, followed by a Galaxy S4, S5, and stunning blue and gold Galaxy Note 7. This being a US Verizon unlocked model. This is easily one of the nicest looking Samsungs ever made, but also the shortest lived because of their reputation of catching fire. But what's better than one Galaxy Note 7 is two, with my other one being a silver US AT&T unlocked version. This one I used in 2020 for a month or two. Also in here is another Apple Watch. This is a first generation, yet another device I have no idea why I still own it. Behind that is one of every iPhone model till the iPhone 7, with the remaining models in boxes behind them. Newer models still hold good resale value, so I don't keep those around. The first of these iPhones is a first generation 8 gig on iOS 3. I've owned this one a long time, but always had plans to downgrade it to iOS 1, but never did. Next to it lives an iPhone 3G also running iOS 3, along with its brother the 3GS, which not only looks identical, but this one is also running iOS 3. Stepping up a generation, we have my iPhone 4s, the first of which is a US only version that shipped without a SIM tray and has the antenna lines of an iPhone 4S. Next is my most amusing phone that's just a little disturbed. How does your bell tower sound? Probably not like this one. How about the peaceful sounds of a harp? I also have my first iPhone, a handed down device which I only ever used as an iPod Touch. The last of this form factor is an iPhone 4S on iOS 5. The next two phones are iPhone 5Cs, both running some version of iOS 7. The second phone having no Bluetooth and can't keep the correct time for the life of it. Preceding that is one big boy, specifically the iPhone 6 Plus, a 128 gig model on iOS 8. Next is an iPhone 6S running iOS 9.2.1 that I've never connected to the internet as Apple has been known to block these phones running outdated software. This iPhone 7 is the only new phone I've purchased to actually use as a daily driver. Subsequently, it was the last iPhone I ever used. It's the special edition product red version 256 gig on iOS 10.3.3. But if Apple's not your kind of fruit, check out these freshly picked blackberries consisting of a BlackBerry Torch. I scored this in a recent e-waste dumpster dive, a nice old slider phone from times gone by. This next one is my favorite form factor of all time, 
This Priv has an OLED screen that is a higher resolution than that of an iPhone 11 Pro. It has a full slide-out keyboard, front-facing speaker, headphone jack, SD card expansion, and wireless charging. All this in 2015. But it also shipped with the worst Snapdragon processor to ever exist, the 808. With poor performance and constant crashes, I couldn't use this phone even when I really wanted to. This key one was my Priv replacement. Built by TCL, its build quality was not to the same standard of BlackBerry's in-house built phones, but it certainly ran a lot smoother and looked macho. But with a need for dual SIM, I did swap to a BlackBerry Key 2 LE, BlackBerry's last ever phone. This has been my main phone for a good few years and I have absolutely no intentions of demoting it from such a task. It's even held up fairly well with no case or screen protector. In this corner of the drawer is one of the rarest phones I own, a Google Pixel 4a. Okay, the Pixel 4a isn't rare, but was on it is. It's locked down with Arcane OS by Anom, an OS marketed as incredibly secure with its inbuilt messenger app, security settings, and decoy modes. This phone was targeted to large criminal organizations. It turned out to be a sting operation by the FBI in cooperation with other law enforcement agencies around the world. I have a full video on the device, how it worked, and its so-called security features, if you're interested. I have managed to fit quite a few tablets in this drawer too, the oldest being an iPad 2 64GB cellular running iOS 4. I should compare this one to an iPad 2 running iOS 9 just to see how much slower the updates make it run. But the next iPad is an iPad 4 32GB on iOS 6.0. Its screen has been broken ever since I got it, but for some reason I just never got around to replacing it. Preceding that is an iPad 2 128GB cellular on iOS 8. It comes with large deep scratches on the left side and is covered in scratches on the back. I also have two iPad minis in this drawer, a third generation on iOS 9 and an iPad mini 2 with a custom privacy screen that is only visible to someone wearing the special glasses. This was one of my custom devices I made in a video. There are a few empty boxes in here from phones currently elsewhere, like this iPhone 10 box, but there is another iPhone 10 in this one. This specific one being a demo model that has some demo apps and a cool custom screensaver that you won't find on a retail device. There is also an S10 Plus hiding amongst the rest. This was the phone I was using prior to the Blackberries. I kept it in case I ever wanted to revert back from a keyboard phone. In the back row, you'll find a boxed iPod Touch first generation. Its back is quite scratched, but it is in fully functional condition. There is also a boxed iPhone 6, and like my 6 Plus, it's also running a version of iOS 8. Next to that is an iPhone 5S on iOS 7.0.6 an iPhone 5 on iOS 6.0.2, and another 5 on 6.1.4. The second last phone in here is an iPhone 4, that I assume is new in box. It's running an unactivated version of iOS 4, and does not have one mark, not one scratch, or one piece of dust in the charge port or speaker grills. The last device in this drawer is an iPhone 3GS, my mum's old phone to be exact. This one I need to part with, as it isn't anything special or even a good example. But don't think that's all the phones I have, because there's still more. These ones are on a whole new level. All of these phones I have custom made over the years, from custom colours, transparent back panels, to glowing logos in gold-plated housings. These are one-off, unique phones. I have already done an in-depth dive into each of my custom phones recently, so if you want to learn more about each device specifically, I'd recommend checking out that video. I found these ones just sitting on my desk. A So Yes mini Android phone, an MP3 player, Sony Xperia 10 Mark III, Google Pixel, Galaxy Note Fan Edition, and an iPhone 12 Pro Max. These are all being used for a side project I'm working on that will be coming in 2024. Most phones we've seen so far started out looking like these ones. This is my assortment of devices needing repair. It's looking a little thin at the moment, but there's still some good stock in here. From an M1 iPad Pro, luxury Virtue phone, 
and an iPhone 15 Pro Max. However, some of these devices have been in this pile longer than I can remember, evident by the amount of dust on some of them. That iPad was donated to me over a year ago, the Virtue Phone I bought years ago, but I have finally acquired a screen for it. There is also a sizable amount of devices I have ready for sale on the Hugh Jeffrey store, but just haven't listed them. I like to ensure the newer devices move along quickly so they can be reused and not just sit in one of my drawers. With that, there's only one box left, the phone graveyard. Most of these are Apple devices where the Apple ID was not signed out, resulting in Apple servers locking them out, preventing their reuse. So while many of these phones physically function, Apple won't let them be used. So they're being reduced to nothing more than their parts. So this is it. The entire device collection for 2024. Was anyone keeping count? I guarantee I still have missed a few that are floating around elsewhere in the house, but this is the majority of them. Is there anything here you wish you had? I have been considering setting up a separate store on my website for custom built and rare devices with a price that I would let them go for. So if you wanted them more than I do, you could buy them, but they wouldn't be cheap. Either way, I have a lot of phones. And on that note, this has been a huge Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the collection playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.